Welcome back friends, welcome back to the homestead. Um, in the last automation video, I was talking about an overview really. Um, I thought, uh, I said I was gonna give you an update on where I've got to, and so I thought I'd do that quickly before I do video two, which is about control. Um, so you can see in front of me a little setup. I've got a couple actually. So uh, yeah, I've made some good progress. Um, I'm actualizing or realizing what I said I thought I could do, I can do in a prototype form. And I, and I just thought I would quickly go over that really and show you what I've done, how it works and how it will work in, in outdoors really. Um, so let's jump straight in and take a look at these two modules here. Okay, so here's the two modules I've already made with the microprocessors on it, which are ESP32s. You can see this one's plugged in and switched on. Um, and that's the Wi-Fi antenna on the end there, um, the Wi-Fi enabled. And this particular one has got a temperature sensor uh, on the end of it, which I've got working at the moment. And the other board has a ultrasonic sensor on it for distance and a soil sensor as well for detecting soil moisture. So let's look at them in a bit more detail. So this is the development environment where um, the code is. Um, and I've got the code there I'm just running through. Just at the bottom here, it just shows, tells the um, board to send back the data it's detecting and then print them, print it into the serial monitor here. And you can see the temperature readings coming back. So if I just put my finger onto the temperature sensor, you'll see that the temperature starts going up very slowly. It's a bit cold here at the moment. And um, when I take the finger off, then the temperature will come back down again. This also detects pressure, but it, um, it's not something I particularly need. And it tries to guess the um, altitude as well. Definitely something I don't need. Okay, before we look at the second board, I just wanted to explain how all this works in terms of communicating between the devices. So once we've deployed the script to the microprocessor, we can essentially remove the USB cable. It's no longer needed, uh, but in this video, I'm using it to supply power. No data is transmitted through it after the initial script is deployed. Once the script is initialized and running, the ESP32 board will connect to Wi-Fi and then publish the sensor data, sending it through Wi-Fi to the router, which for us is up in our loft. The Raspberry Pi is acting as a server and is connected to the router with an ethernet cable although it can also connect by Wi-Fi. The Raspberry Pi then publishes the data via the live dashboard web page, which you'll see later in this video and can be accessed by any device with a browser on the home network. So my PC or phone or a tablet, for example. Okay, if we look at the second board, um, again, another um, ESP32 with an ultrasonic sensor and the capacitive soil moisture sensor and my test cup of compost, which I'll just pop the sensor in there. That's how it works, that's how it stands in the soil. So if we look at the script again, I'll go into a little bit more detail. So we've got our include files at the top, I'm calling in other uh, Wi-Fi settings, um, and then I've got ultrasonic settings. You see I've commented everything anyway. So um, that tells us, um, it's got stuff like how big is the tank, so it can do the maths to calculate the volume. So then there's our soil moisture settings, and I've got the um, nominal values for the air and for the water to get our difference between zero and 100. Um, then there's our MQTT server, which I'll talk about in a minute. That's basically the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. Um, and then we have our setup, which is what it runs once, uh, when the script is run. Um, then we've got our loop to get the values. Um, so all the data from the sensors, it will collect all that at that point. Do some maths to work out um, where we are with each sensor and the volume, um, do the calculation for the tanks, or one tank in this case. Um, and then if we lose contact uh, with Wi-Fi or the MQTT server, it will automatically reconnect, which is nice. And then there's just our main script loop, which runs through all those things and then publishes the data through to um, MQTT 
where we can collect it to display it. Let's push that up to our ESP32. So what will happen now is um, the script will just compile, um, does it all for you automatically, which is nice. And then it will, and then it will send it via USB up to the ESP32 um, when it can then start working. That's all done. Perfect. Let's see what we get. So connecting to the Wi-Fi, found the IP address, checking it, success. Attempting uh, MQTT, that's connected. So now it can collect the data and we can see our soil moisture um, sensor reading zero because it's out of the compost at the moment. And it's giving us some distance data and um, that's in liters as well. Okay, let's look at what's happening at the other end uh, when the data is received. So we're looking at something called Node Red. Um, this is a, a free program for the Raspberry Pi, which I've installed, and it allows someone to program and do stuff without having a lot of programming knowledge. To put it simply, it's called Flow Programming, and it uses a system uh, of nodes uh, and the nodes flow from uh, one node to another and it allows you to, to bring data in and send data out or send controls and requests out and you can build these flows to do all sorts of clever things and people use them to switch all the lights on and off and stuff like that but um, you can see here I've got my two um, nodes my two MQ, MQTT nodes now MQTT I've mentioned a couple of times and that is a simple way it's a protocol for sending data and communication back and forth and those two nodes uh, are represented here by the tank and um, the soil moisture node and they will flow uh, the data will flow from those um, those collection points into a chart or into a gauge um, which will vis visualize that data onto a dashboard, which we'll look at in a bit. Node Red's really easy to use, actually. Once you, you know, you watch a couple of videos and tutorials, and you can, there's all different nodes which you can import, different gauges, different charts, and we can look at a new, putting a new chart on, and that's how I connect it. And um, there's all the settings, and you can choose a different type of chart, pie charts, and all that, line charts, and delete it. And there's current settings for the current chart. That's historical data. And the same goes for uh, the soil moisture as well. Now you, you can use um, Node Red for various different things. Like I just said, people use it for home automation and controlling all sorts of stuff uh, without the need to display and visualize any of the data coming in. Let's go and have a look at the dashboard and see our sensors visualized and the data coming through um, real time. Okay, so um, this is the dashboard, um, and it's a way of rep you know presenting data in blocks, really. So um, each one of these five things, including our logo, is classed as a block. And you can fill the blocks with any sort of chart or button uh, or sort of form or something that you know you want to receive and show data or you want to send data back. Um, people program these to do all the lights in the houses and all sorts. So uh, that's something that we can come later with the control element. So um, we've got the water tank here, which is um, our ultrasonic um, detector. And I'll explain how that works in a minute. And then we've got the soil moisture, and you can see currently the soil moisture is kind of normalized at 11-12%. Uh, um, the compost soil that's come out of the bag is a little bit dry. Um, you've kind of got to work out what is normal and what is high and what is low. And that will only come through using it really and testing it. So um, in a minute I'll pour a load of water onto the soil moisture sensor or into the cup of compost and um, it'll, you'll see it kind of go off the scale around to 100. But of course, then that will that'll then settle back um, as the soil, as the compost takes in the moisture and it, and it dries out. And then underneath these two instant charts, we've got historical data charting. Um, so the liters that's in the tank and the soil moisture percentage. Um, and you can see where I've been doing some 
testing already with the full of water you know pouring water on and then taking the sensor out and it goes down to zero etc etc and currently it's just resting at 11 um so um yeah and you can move all these around put them where you want change the colors um and all kind of other clever stuff like that but i'm just testing at the moment so um it is what it is so let me just demonstrate the soil moisture sensor to you now um, and i'll pour some water on and you'll see how the gauge instantly changes to, to give you a fresh readout right okay so that's the soil moisture um, you've seen that working now um, let's uh, and you can see it's kind of normalized a bit it will change and you can change all the colors as well visualize so that you can change it so the higher it goes the the color changes so it could be red or green or whatever um, let's look at the water tanks um, a water tank and I'll show you how that works in terms of um, the ultrasonic um, detector so currently showing 565 liters and I showed you briefly in the script you I've just done a little bit of maths to work out um, if you take the ping distance how far it pings till it hits the surface of the water and pings back um, you know the void you know the space in the tank and then you just take the tank capacity and the space away from each other and you're left with how many liters are in the tank is just simple maths really um, once you know the area and the volume and all that kind of stuff um, so that's all the ultrasonic thing is doing is it's sending out a ping and that will bounce off the surface of the water bounce back to the other there's two sensors as you saw and the other one will collect the sound the ultrasonic sound um, exactly the same how bats ears work basically and from that you do the maths like I said and it will tear the liters and then you just send that data through through MQTT into node red and node red will display it just like that so um let me just show you how that works and I'll move an object closer and further away from the sensor um, and we can see that working so here's the, here's the object reasonably close about 20-30 centimeters it's calculating 930 liters I'll move it away a bit and you'll see the ping it pings every 10 seconds I think or 5 seconds I can't remember now I'll move it a bit further a bit further still and then I bring it back up again bring it a bit closer as if the water's been um, pumped back into the tank to top it up and then we kind of have maximum capacity and so that that with just ultrasonic sensor and the board um, would just go into a little box and with a power unit batteries or something rechargeable batteries or a solar charger and that was I'll just glue that on the lid of the tank so it points downwards um, and uh, that could then send the data through Wi-Fi um, completely autonomously really okay so that's how far I've got I'm pretty pleased actually um, I've proven the concept of it working and um, it's you know pretty good progress so what we just need to do is tidy these up really and get them outside um, and test them outdoors really i've got a load of gear coming to, to be able to do that all the batteries and the and the uh, battery cells and boxes and um boards and all that kind of stuff um so i'll keep you posted um how things are going the next video will be talking about the more of the control aspect and um now i've got my head around how this node red works and everything like that um i can put some other you know do, start playing around with some other bits and pieces um all the stuff i'm I do do some programming, but I'm, you know, I'm no by no means kind of a engineer. Um, most of the stuff that I've done, I've picked up off the internet and then modified it myself to do what I want. So it's all available out there. You just need to um, hunt around. So I'm not going to go into great detail about all the scripts. Um, if you are really, really interested, then um, get in touch and we'll, I'll see what I can do. But I don't plan to do loads of videos about all the programming side, but I will point to the resources. Um, um, yeah, I hope you found that interesting. Um, do share and like and subscribe and do all that stuff that you do on social media and, and click the right buttons because that really helps uh, me to reach more people. And um, yeah, um, I look forward to seeing you in another video soon. Bye for now.